guys, it's Shelley here. Welcome to my channel and thank you for joining me today. As part of my autumn colouring, of course, I had to colour some mushrooms and I thought I'd come on here and share with you guys um, my process of colouring mushrooms and I thought I'd just do it as a colour along um, in Makiko Inutomi's book Wild Mouse Yururi's Journey Sketch. We get so many different types of mushrooms in our colouring books, just like in nature, lots of different shapes and so instead of showing how to just colour one mushroom I thought I'd just come and use this page to share with you how I colour a few mushrooms so you'll be able to see my shading process on them but more than that I wanted to just um, share with you a few different colour combinations for mushrooms instead of just always going for red mushrooms which is what I tend to do quite a lot but I thought I'd play around with some colours and come up with some different colour combinations for mushrooms that you may want to use in your colouring books as well. So you can, you don't have to obviously colour this page, you can maybe use some of these ideas for any of your colouring book pages that have mushrooms in them. I decided to come up with some different colours that I don't always go for. So I tried out a combination of like purpley colours with blue on a mushroom. I went for a pinkish mushroom, a yellow brown, which I guess you could probably get. Um, and then a bit more normal was the a greenish mushroom and a red one. Um, so yeah, I thought I would just share you with you how I coloured this page from, from the book. I go in ahead and do the background first with soft pastels because I knew I wanted to use soft pastels and I thought it was a simple page for me to lay down the soft pastel first and then just erase the bits that I don't want the pastels on, so um, the mushrooms. And um, if it was a busier page, I would probably come in with my soft pastels at the end. However, this is a simple one where I thought it would be pretty straightforward just to lay down the pastels and then just erase off the areas I don't want. And um, the reason I did this is because if you go over with pastels later, if you haven't covered the tooth of the paper, so the elements that you're colouring, if you haven't coloured every bit of the tooth of the paper, some of the soft pastel goes onto those areas. So you have to make sure that even your highlight areas, where sometimes you might leave a little bit of the white of the paper, you'd need to make sure you use a white pencil over those areas so that the soft pastel is resisted. Um, and I didn't want to, I just wanted this to be a bit of relaxed colouring. And so I didn't want to have to make sure that I don't forget to colour every little um, millimetre of the paper um, with pencil. Um, so that my soft pastel doesn't go go over the mushrooms. So yeah, just to make it easier colouring for me, a bit more relaxed colouring, I decided to do the soft pastels, erase off the bits I didn't want, and then go over with pencil. I use a Faber-Castell soft pastels, but any soft pastels would work. And um, before going, I don't always do this. Um, I, I, I just be a little bit conscious about not smudging the soft pastels everywhere. But if you want to you can use a fixative after you've done the erasing to make sure that the soft pastel stay put and doesn't get smudged everywhere um, so i share with you on screen what fixative i use you need to use a workable fixative if you're going to do it this way around where you use the soft pastels first and then start working with your pencils because you want to be able to go onto the page with your pencil so make sure it's a workable fixative once my soft pastel background is done, I keep it very simple, as you'll see. I then start working on my mushrooms and yeah, I just chose the colours randomly. I didn't have a plan in mind. I didn't worry whether the colours uh, of each mushroom are going to go with each other. I just thought that it'll be fun to just come up with different colour combinations for mushrooms. And that's what I did. So I have a sort of light pink, sort of skin tone pink pinks. Um, for one of the mushrooms. I have a purpley blue mushroom. I go for a green mushroom. I was going to try and do a bright green mushroom, but as usual, I um, got attracted to my olivey greens, my earth, earth green yellowish and greens like that, but I like how it turned out. And then I did a bit of reddish mushroom, but instead of going for a reddy orange, I just went for a reddy pink and um, I did a brown and yellow mushroom. 
and so yeah I'll share that with you on screen um, all the color combinations that I used. I have been using Thule Art paint pens for a, for a while now. I've got uh, three sets of the paint pens and I started using them back in July and so I thought I'd use it on this page as well just for certain areas where um, my highlights lie just to make the mushrooms pop a little bit more. So you will see that I will show my um, Thule Art on screen and I just use different shades for the different mushrooms to do the highlights and I think the main ones I used are from the pastel set of Thule Arts. I think I might have used one from the yellow set, yellow and brown set. I'm not sure if I used the earth and skin tone set but I think it, the main ones I used were from, uh, well majority of the ones I used were from the pastel set of Thule Art. With regards to how I actually do my shading on the mushrooms, it varies for different mushrooms because every mushroom is has a different shape and so the areas of highlights and the areas of shadows will be in different areas. And well, to be honest, I didn't even look at reference pictures for any of these mushrooms. I just decided what I wanted to do as I was going along. I thought, I thought they turned out okay. Um, so yeah, I think the best thing will be to just watch where I put the shadows and highlights. Um, and as I always say, have a good shadow and uh, have a good um, contrast between your shadow pencil and your highlight. And that will make your element pop off the page. And then to help the whole popping off the page, I feel using those paint pens, any paint pens you want to use, but using paint pens to to get rid of any black lines, especially in your highlight areas, will make that element really stand out. I also shared a couple of um, color, color combinations for stalks, so mainly on the red mushrooms and the yellow brown mushroom, which is more of a grayish, whitish stalk on the mushroom, which is probably more that more likely to be seen in nature so um, that can go with any color mushroom that you choose so even if I use the grayish um, stalk on the purple mushroom it would have worked or on the lighter pink mushroom it would have worked or the green one so it's 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 nice to have that one combination which you can use for a variety of different colors of mushrooms because you don't always need to go for an entirely colorful mushroom so the head as well as the stalk of the mushroom being a totally colorful one in certain pages you may want to make it look a little bit more realistic and so maybe those color combinations will give you some ideas once i've finished off the mushrooms i just share how i complete the rest of the page so there's just a couple of leaves on there um, that i did a bit of a yellow green one just to show that they're turning color for the autumn season and then I frame, I, I go over the frame of the illustration with a gold Sakura jelly roll, um, metallic jelly roll. And um, right at the end, off screen, I will sprinkle a little bit of gold metallic watercolor paint, uh, which is the Arteza one that I have. And I do that off screen because I don't have a setup which I can do it on screen. And if I did, it would just go all over the walls. Um, so yeah, I do that off screen, but you'll see the end result um, at the end of the video. So I hope you enjoy this video. I should have probably done a mushroom video a lot earlier in my um, and included it in my autumn series. But I think autumn is still go goes into uh, November. So uh, hopefully some of you are still doing autumn coloring and you get some ideas from what I share on this video. So I'll leave you guys to watch the rest of the video. I hope you enjoy it. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one, hopefully soon. So until then, take care and bye bye.